All right, well, first of all, everybody's disappointed uh, being at home and losing uh, in the locker room. No one's happy in the locker room. Uh, we're all disappointed. And, you know, we had our opportunities in the game to win. I thought we started fast. Uh, we didn't finish. So that's really what it comes down to. You got to finish in games. Uh, I did like the start. I thought there were some good things in there. But going at halftime, 28 to 10, you come out. Uh, they had a little momentum going in at half. And we needed to be able to continue what we did in the second half and the first half. We didn't do that. They got momentum and we didn't get it back uh, really until the fourth quarter and a little bit too late. So um, situational football, we got to be better on third downs. We had too many penalties. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we had all of our opportunities to win the game. So you know, we're not going to make excuses for our play. Uh, Mississippi State played well enough to win. And they got themselves back in the game and finished it. Uh, so we got to take this and you know, we'll learn from it uh, these last two games. But this one being the most recent, we'll learn from it and we'll apply it to this next week. But, you know, the sting has to stay. And that's something that, you know, we got to make sure as we put in the work, uh, you know, what it takes to be able to play in a four quarter ball game, uh, how we need to prepare the type of intensity and, focus that it takes uh, to do that day in and day out, and then how that will show up on Saturdays um, and get the results that we want. So, you know, it starts with every single day. It starts with guys loving ball and, and doing the work and making sure that you know, we understand the four quarters of football and how important those are every time we're practicing and every time we go out there and step on the field. Um, you got to be able to start like we did. You got to be able to finish much better than we did. So, um, Without watching the tape, I mean, that's really what I felt like in the game. And, you know, that was really the, the kind of the tale of two halves right there. And, uh, you know, an 18-point lead, it's it's not enough. You know, that's that's what we talked about at halftime. Like, that's not enough. you got to keep playing. And, and at the end of the day, it's still about our execution and the things that we're trying to accomplish uh, every time we step on the field. And that didn't happen. It wasn't good enough. Um, I've got to do a better job making sure that we understand how to finish and how to keep attacking and playing our game throughout four quarters of it. Um, so there's no back down or slow down. And, uh, you know, right now we, we just, we didn't do that. So I got to do a better job of, of making sure that we get those things done. And, and then we got to go out there and execute and, and understand what it takes to win games and finish. So with that questions, Brian Stokes, Brian, uh, you talked about the uh, difference between the two halves with uh, Will Rogers. He was, uh, you know, 50% in the first half passing the ball. Then in the second half, I mean, he was, I think, 32 of, or uh, 24 or 26 uh, passing the ball for two, 271 yards. What do you think was the difference between uh, the first and half and the second half and his production and the defense for Auburn? Well, he obviously he played well. I mean, those, those stats are, uh, you know, different obviously, than in the two halves. So, like I told you, it's kind of a tale of two halves. We played well early on. I thought we got a little bit of pressure on him, um, probably in a little bit better position in some of our coverages. We had penalties that extended drives. Um, and so, you know, all those things were not in our favor from that standpoint. We still had chances to make plays. And, you know, the wide receivers are a part of that too, and, and uh, the protection is part of that. So, uh, the second half adjustments and what we were doing, uh, wasn't good enough, and uh, they were able to capitalize on, on you know, that type of performance from the quarterback. And, uh, I kept those guys on the field. That's what they do. They throw the ball. Uh, so we have to be able to, to bend, defend that, get off the field, and uh, you know, get off the field on third downs. They were 50% on third downs, and uh, you know, we didn't do a good enough job of that. So bottom line is uh, we got we got to cover better, and we got to be in better position, and then you know, some of those penalties that extended drives, we had chances to get off the field and there were there were some penalties that extended their drives and uh, they continued uh, to move the ball down the field and they had momentum. And like I said before, you got to find a way to capture that momentum and get it back. And we weren't able to do that enough in the second half. Tom Green. <clears throat> hey, Brian, you guys were able to move the ball pretty effectively on the ground in the first half, but what, what changed in the second half that made it so difficult for you guys to establish the run? I don't know. Yeah, there, there were some things they did. They, they made adjustments. Um, I don't know. 
particular that they did uh, probably had to do more with us than anything. And, you know, one of the things that we're doing well, we're throwing the ball well. We had some good throws down the field, we made some plays and had some explosives, which was good. We didn't have that the previous game. And that was positive for us, uh, especially early on. We didn't have enough of those in the second half. But as far as the run game goes, I, you know, I think there were things that we did. There were there were some assignment errors in there. There were things that they were doing. Uh, so it just wasn't consistent enough at the end of the day. I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. We didn't run it effectively in the second half because we weren't consistent and, and they made some adjustments. But uh, every team we play does that. When they make adjustments, we make adjustments. And, I just don't think that we executed well in the run game in the second half like we could and took advantage of some of the things like we did in the first half. And so that that goes back to, you know, really just us being consistent in our execution and, and uh, continuing on what we did in the first half and the second half. Uh, that didn't show up. So we'll look at the tape tonight and we'll know more of the details of why, but that's what I felt like as the game went on. Jeff Spiegel. <clears throat> Yes, Brian. Can you uh, can you talk about the the targeting call on TD Moultrie and what you saw on that? Yeah, that's that's the one thing they made a decision from upstairs that that was targeting. Uh, what I saw on the replay was him going up because the quarterback's in a passing position to try to block the pass. Uh, quarterback freezes. He's coming down, and then he sacks the quarterback in that situation right there. So. Uh, you know, in targeting, you got to define what who's defenseless. Um, you know, the crown of the helmet. There's all these these other things that come into play, and I didn't see that on that play. But they called it from the booth because uh, it wasn't called on the field, and the officials that were out there, I think, saw the same thing I saw. Um, what they saw in the booth, they felt like it was targeting. That was the explanation to me. And um, you know, we'll go back and look at it. I don't, I don't have a replay of it right now in front of me. But we'll go back and look at it. Uh, but I think that's that's a tough call. I mean, you you have a, a momentum changing play right there. Uh, one of our better players that's going to be out uh, because of the second half, and then uh, it wasn't called on the field, and so it was called down. I just I'll have to look at it before I really have a, a better opinion on it. Uh, but it was called, and it changed field position and, and gave them the first down. And, um, and we were getting some momentum in that moment right there, which was good. Uh, that just kind of took that away. Caesar Walker. Coach, we had a tough day in terms of special teams with a block field goal. And we also had a, uh, a failed fake punt. Also had a, a few penalties and another missed field goal by Carlson. Your assessment in terms of the execution of special teams and how that can swing the momentum of the game for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, not good enough is my assessment. You know, the fake punt, we're trying to create some momentum. Uh, we did have the look. And, you know, anytime you're going to run a fake punt, uh, there's, there's you know, chances where they can defend that. Um, so we were close on it, but we felt like, and we, and we felt like it wasn't this game too, we, we were going to need some momentum uh, just to get, you know, the offense wasn't, wasn't providing that we needed to create something and that was my call on that right there to, to go with the fake punt that didn't work as far as the block field goal uh you know we had a kick out of bounds penalty there and then we had multiple penalties on special teams which uh, hard for me to say right now with, without watching the, the the tape so you know, there's, there's things that happen on special teams. You send the plays in, they'll send it back to you after a couple of days, say they were wrong or, or this was, uh, you know, shouldn't have been officiated that way. It's just hard to tell without watching it. But we had some big returns and they, and they were negated by the penalty. So uh, that, that does become a factor. Uh, but, but I don't know the answer to that right now as, as far as why, you know, did we actually have them where they called for whatever reasons and, you know, whether the right calls at that point. So, but special teams are you know, an opportunity for us to change the game. We really didn't do that. Uh, we didn't really have any plays in there to change the game. We didn't really have anything in there that, that created the momentum that we needed. Um, and so, you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, create those like we think we should every single week. And, you know, that, that's to be the challenge again for us every single week is how do we make 
special teams uh, in some way an opportunity for us to change the game. We didn't do that tonight. Mark Murphy. Yeah, could you talk about how much time uh, Rogers had back in the pocket to assess where the receivers are going to be? It seemed to be a big part of the comeback. Yeah, it, it did seem that way. I thought in the first half we got more pressure on him. Uh, at least we made a move uh, from his his alignment in the pocket there. So we got him off his spot a little bit more than we did in the second half. And I think their old line did a good job making adjustments. Um, I don't know why we didn't get as much pressure or why he felt more comfortable in the second half than he did the first half. Uh, I mean, just from – from looking at it from the sideline, it felt like, you know, we weren't getting the kind of pressure that we had gotten early. And so, you know, that's a factor. He is able to sit back there and they're running some ends and some different concepts where, you know, you got to, you got to get in his face. You got to be able to, to move him a little bit. Uh, otherwise at some point guys are going to open up and that's what happened. We still need to cover, but that's what happened. And, uh, you know, I think that time in the pocket was a factor. Jordan Hill. And we've seen a few games now where in the second half, the offense hasn't been able to keep up what you guys were able to do in the first half. Can you kind of put your figure on anything that you've seen over these games where the second half's been an issue? Yeah, I mean, it comes back to execution. You know, we don't um, – we're not as consistent in the second half. Let me say that. I think you know, we do some things early in the first half, and then, you know, we we got to continue to keep attacking in the second half as aggressively – uh, just playing and executing uh, as we do in the first half. It doesn't seem like we do that in the second half. Uh, now, I know the defenses make adjustments, but you also have a pretty good idea of what they might do. You have still have uh, quite a few plays left on your call sheet uh, that are good going in the second half. And we, you know, we didn't extend drives really. We didn't keep ourselves in the field. Or, or keep attacking like we did in the first half, which I thought, you know, we came out and, and we were attacking the defense. We were making plays. We had some explosive plays. Uh, and that needed to continue in the second half. And so you know, we didn't execute certain things like, you know, we're capable of. Uh, some adjustments that they made, we had to figure uh, how we're going to adjust to some of the, the concepts that we were using based off their adjustments. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we still got to, got to make plays. We got to execute like we do in the first half. And, and it's there because we, sh we saw it. We had, you know, the second half, I just think it comes back to finish a ball game. I think it comes back to find a ways to put teams away. You, know, you can't be satisfied with 28 points necessarily in the first half and just say, hey, we're good. You got to, you got to continue to keep attacking. You got to put as many points on the board as you can. That's the responsibility of the offense. And, you know, it's, it's not okay to go out there and uh, punt. You know, it, and you, you want to have the mindset as an offensive player you're trying to score every time we get the ball in our hands. And, uh, so it's a little bit of execution. I think it's it's mentality. It's keeping the you know, kind of the pedal down and, and being aggressive, uh, coming after the defense and the run game, the pass game, and guys playing hard, finishing through four quarters and just having that mentality of, having that same attacking attitude for four quarters of football. Our last question today is from Tobias Wilborn. Uh, oh, shoot, sorry about that. Um, how do you, I guess, keep the morale of your team after such a hard loss with two games left, including an iron ball coming up? Yeah, well, I think, you know, one, it comes back to guys loving football, number one. Uh, that's really what we're going to come to. you got to have a bunch of guys that love the game. And, yeah, that's going to be the challenge because when you don't win, when you win, everything's good. When you lose, things can be um, – you start to uh, question and you know, yourself and then things that you're doing. Do you have to go that hard? Uh, is this really worth it? You know, are these the things we need to be doing? And absolutely. You know, we talked about that in the locker room. Uh, but it's the same message – since go back to the fall camp and even spring practice on just what it takes to be successful and, and to win each and every week. So, uh, you know, and it goes back to just, you know, guys loving the game. You got you to gotta love practicing and preparing. You got to love playing the game. You got to love being out there uh, with your guys and, and getting yourself better. And, 
you know, that's the challenge. The challenge is right now we're not good enough. How do we get better? How do we improve? How do we find ways to finish ball games? How do I do a better job of, of making sure that we're ready to play four quarters of football? And, you know, there's plenty of challenges. That, that's not that's not in question. We have a, a tremendous amount of challenges and all that. It's just who's willing to step up and, and accept those challenges and go out there and work on it. Um, I know guys want to win. I know every Saturday they want to go out there and win. I think that's important. Um, but the reality of our football team is you know, who wants to prepare to go out there and win and who, who really has <clears throat> that love for the game and getting themselves ready day to day out to go out there and have a great performance, but really just to play um, and have a chance to go compete. So we, we got to do a much better job of emphasizing that uh, from our staff and everybody around and just making sure that we understand the importance of those things. And, uh, so there, there's no lack of challenge. Let me just tell you that there's no lack of work that we have to do. It's, it's uh, every guy in there just really understanding that and, you know, we got to accept that. We got to go back to work. It's it's painful. You know, this loss stings. Every one that we we lose, it stings. Uh, what are you going to do about it at the end of the day? What are you going to do? How are you going to respond? You know, what's are you going to fold your tent and and just not give the effort necessary and just kind of roll with all the excuses? Or are you going to blow your neck a little bit and go get ready to play and have a great Sunday? make sure that we're ready to do all the things necessary to, to be a better football team. So uh, that's the challenge. That's my challenge. That's our challenge. And, uh, you know, we're not going to back them. We won't quit. And, and these guys won't quit. And the guys that are on the field, they're going to be ready to play. And we'll have that attitude. And we'll, we'll show that next time we step on the field. It's just we got to do a better job of that and make sure that uh, those things uh, improve in order for us to do that. All right, Coach. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you.